2nd Infantry Division landed on Omaha Beach on June 7, 1944, one day after the initial invasion of Normandy. It was known as the Indian Head Division and was one of the most decorated and battle-tested divisions of the United States Army during World War II. Hello and welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm your host Frank Foster and today we have a new and very interesting series. We're going to take a look at all of the combat divisions that fought in the European theater during World War II. Because one of the most frequent questions that I receive is how do I find out the military medals, the military honors that my dad or my granddad earned in Europe during World War II? Well, the truth is that all of the soldiers came home with only ribbon bars. The European theater, well, European, African, Middle East campaign medal had not even been designed and it wasn't available until several years after the war. <laughs> Nor was the victory medal or the occupation medal. So we're going to take a look at each division. The elderly of that division patch is distinctive unit insignia. We'll take a look at the campaigns and the dates of the campaigns that they participated in. Then we'll take a look at any unit honors, presidential unit citations, etc., that they may have earned and the dates that they earned them. And then we'll take a look at the basic medals that every soldier who fought in the European theater would have earned. And we'll take a special look at the extra honors that the combat infantrymen and the combat medics earned. I think you'll find this very interesting. And by the end of it, you'll have a good idea and a good reference to the military honors that your dad or granddad, who fought in World War II in the European theater, will have earned. Thank you. The 2nd Infantry Division patch is probably one of the most unique in the United States Army, and it has a fascinating history. Back in 1917, the supply and uh, transportation commander wanted to get a symbol on his trucks in France like the French had. And so he made a contest, and one person recommended a white star, another person recommended an Indian head. So he said, well, I'll just put the Indian head on the white star. And that was how the vision patch got started. Fascinating. The Indian head is red, white, and blue, but the design originally came, are you ready for this? Originally came from a $10 gold piece, which had an Indian head, and that, where, that is where it was copied from. Pretty neat, huh? The patch itself is one of the largest in the United States Army, and the shield, in heraldic terms, represents protection. So you have a star on the shield and the Indian head on top of a star. The patch had some very interesting variations during World War I when it came underneath the command of a Marine general, and I'll show you those in just a second. But looking just to the right, the distinctive unit insignia, sec that is available today and worn on the soldier's epaulet has second to none as the motto, a tommyhawk that represents the American origins of a division, the three feathers that represent the combat in World War I, World War II, and Korea, and the fleur de lis which represents its initial service in France. So let's go take a look at General Lejeune's World War I variations. <laughs> In October of 1918, the 2nd Infantry Division received a new commander, Major General John Lejeune. A little-known fact is, at this time, a Marine Corps general was assigned to command an Army division. General Lejeune ordered that the size and the shape of a 2nd Infantry Division patch be changed to include a background color that represented the different divisional units. And here you can see some early, well, for example, on the bottom row, well, surprise of surprises, there's the 5th Marines, 3rd Battalion, and then the 6th Marines, 1st Battalion, and then the 2nd Field Artillery Brigade, and so on. Every patch was slightly different. Part of an infantry division, well, they are the infantry regiments, and shown here are the three key regiments of the division. Starting on your left, the 9th Infantry Regiment, Manchu, then in the center, variations of the 23rd Infantry Regiment. And on the far right, the Rock of the Marne, the 38th Infantry Regiment. Distinctive unit insignias. <laughs> Special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain Inn, South Carolina, for providing all the medals and badges that you see in the show today. And if you enjoy these shows, please give us a like and subscribe. That will keep us on the air. 
So, and give us your feedback in the comments below. Okay, let's keep going. The Indian Head Division was one of the most decorated divisions of the United States Army during World War II. It was awarded four presidential unit citations. I saw three up there. I inadvertently left off Tunisia. It also received Valorous Unit Award, the Meritorious Unit Commendation, and received a Belgium Forger, the French Forger or Croix de Guerre with palms, the Luxembourg Croix de Guerre, and the Netherlands Orange Lanyard. And I'll show you examples of those. Oh, by the way, I'll list all of these in detail down below. For a unit to receive the Presidential Unit Citation is the equivalent of an individual receiving the Distinguished Service Cross. And I should mention there is a Presidential Unit Citation Commemorative Medal available. The Valorous Unit Award is the unit equivalent of an individual award of a Silver Star. And the Army Meritorious Unit Citation is the equivalent of an individual recipient of a Legion of Merit. And here's an example of the Belgium Forger and Benevolence Orange Lanyard on the shoulder of a uniform. During World War II, the War Department designated three theaters of operation. On your left, the Pacific Theater, you can see the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal. It was awarded for service there. In the center, the United States, or the American Theater, and the blue ribbon is the representation of the American Campaign Medal. And then the one that we're interested in, the European African Middle East Theater, represented by the have a medal shown here, the European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal. In this particular case, for the 2nd Infantry Division, we show the campaigns in Algier, French Morocco, Tunisia, Sicily, Normandy, Northern France, Rhinelands, Ardennes, and Central Europe, which would be seven campaign stars plus an arrowhead. Not every 2nd Infantry Division soldier would have earned all of these campaign stars. Well, there were over 20,000 soldiers in at the height of the war, and there were over 16,000 casualties. But every soldier would have earned one, two, three, who knows, up to seven campaign stars. And I've listed all of the campaigns and their dates down below. For the three basic medals, you can assume that everyone who served in the 2nd Infantry Division would have earned in World War II the American Campaign Medal for their service in America during their training period, the European African Middle East Campaign Medal with the appropriate number of campaign stars, and the World War II Victory Medal. But let's keep going because you're going to see there are a lot more of medals that they probably did earn. So a very basic display of their medals would be as shown here to include their marksmanship badges down at the bottom and have included at least one presidential unit citation. During World War II, the Army changed its regulation on the Army Good Conduct Medal and it could be awarded to enlisted soldiers who served honorably for one year or more while on active duty with the Army. And so most of the enlisted soldiers in the 2nd Infantry Division would have received a Good Conduct Medal, as shown here on the far left. So a typical enlisted man of the Indian Head Division would have a display like this. The Indian Head patch is insignia for U.S. and branch of service, then the Good Conduct Medal, American Campaign Medal, the ETO Medal, and the Victory Medal. And then down at the bottom, their marksmanship badges. The marksmanship badges awarded during World War II in the U.S. Army are shown here. Starting in your upper left was the expert rifleman, and then to the right of it was the expert with the carbine. Then down below in the lower left-hand corner would be the sharpshooter, and then the marksman. And each one of the badges had a qualifying bar underneath it. There's a great video out on all of the Army marksmanship badges if you want to learn more. Every soldier in the 2nd Infantry Division at the end of World War II would have received or been authorized the Occupation Medal because after the German surrender in May of 1945, the division remained in Europe as part of the Occupation Forces assisting with the demilitarization and reconstruction of Germany. 
And so the Army of Occupation Medal is authorized any soldier who spent 30 days after the surrender of Germany before returning home. The medal with the Germany bar is shown on the far right. A 2nd Infantry Division enlisted soldier at the end of World War II would have a display case looking like this. Good Conduct Medal, American Campaign, the ETO with the appropriate campaign stars, the Victory Medal, and the Occupation of Germany Medal, plus whatever unit awards he is authorized. But wait, there's more good news. In 1947, General Marshall authorized the award of the Bronze Star Medal for meritorious service to every member of a division who had earned the Combat Infantry Badge or the Combat Medics Badge. And so there would now be six medals authorized a Combat Infantryman or a Combat Medic. Now, the Bronze Star is authorized in two degrees. One for Valor is shown on the left, and it has a V device affixed on both the ribbon and the drape, and one for Meritorious Service, and it is presented without a V device. Here, an infantryman of the 38th Infantry Regiment of the Indian Head Division displays his Combat Infantry Badge, Decorations, Service Medals, and Marksmanship Awards. During its time in combat in World War II, over 16,000 members of a division received a Purple Heart. If you want to know more about the Purple Heart Medal, there's a separate video available for you on YouTube. So at the end of a war, a combat medic who came home with three ribbons would in actuality be authorized six medals as shown on the lower right. If he had been wounded in combat, his display would add the Purple Heart Medal, and it would come after the Bronze Star and before the Good Conduct Medal, as shown here. And here's a unique display case put together by a combat medic of the Indian Head Division that included his uniform, his medals, commemorative medals, heck, even his dog tags. Displaying World War II military decorations and service medals can be a source of pride and honor for veterans and their families. These awards serve as a tangible symbol of the sacrifices and contributions made by those who serve their country during one of the most significant conflicts in human history. Additionally, displaying your granddad or dad's medals can help educate future generations about the sacrifices and the bravery of those who served during World War II and ensure that their legacy and their contributions are not forgotten. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please give us comments or even better, a like or a subscribe. That'll keep us on the air. And don't forget, all of the campaign credits and all of the unit award credits are listed below. So, see you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop.